Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Plan T part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now with this, we will uh, conclude this lesson with the last topic that is plant life cycles and alternation of generations. So now that we studied about the life cycle of so many different types of plants, what did we conclude? So we will now generalize whatever we have studied so far regarding the life cycle of a plant. So here in general we will talk about what is a plant life cycle and what are the different types of plant life cycle possible. So before we talk about the different types of plant life cycle, let us see what do we mean by a plant life cycle in general. The plant life cycle begins with a seed germinating into a seedling. So this is how a plant life cycle begins. You have a seed. The seed germinates to form a seedling. This seedling then grows to form a plant. This plant will mature. Now when the plant matures, it has the reproductive structure that is flower. Now this with the help of this flower, reproduction takes place and seed is formed again. So this is how a general plant life cycle is. So, right, you might say that for angiosperms you have flower, but for other plants you do not have flowers. But you have some process of reproduction, right? Whether, whether I have the gametophytes or the sporophytes, but there is some way of reproduction. And this cycle keeps on repeating over and again. So therefore, we see that the life of a plant has a cyclic pattern. Seed gives rise to plant. Again, plant helps gives rise to seed. So it is a cyclic pattern. So now when we looked at the life cycle of so many different types of plants, life cycle of a moss, a fern, life cycle of a gymnosperm, life cycle of an angiosperm, we, we could observe that basically there are three patterns of plant life cycle. Haplontic, diplontic, and haplodiplontic. So these are the three patterns of plant life cycle and the life cycle of any plant, be it a bryophyte, pteridophyte, phanogaps, whatever, each of them falls under one of these patterns. So let us discuss each of these patterns in detail one by one. Before that, when I talk about haplontic and diplontic, we basically are talking about the haploid and diploid cells which are present or involved in the life cycle of a plant. So when I talk about the gametophyte, it is a haploid phase. When I talk about a sporophyte, it is the diploid phase. So in general, for any plant, what happens? A zygote is formed as a result of fertilization or fusion between the male and female gametes. Now this zygote will give rise to the sporophyte, right? The sporophyte will undergo meiosis and it will form spores. These spores will then germinate to form the gametophyte. The gametophyte will give rise to the gametes. So the gametes are produced. Now these gametes will undergo fertilization or fusion to form the zygote. So this is the basic life cycle of any type of plant. So here if you see zygote is a diploid phase. When you look at sporophyte, sporophyte is again a diploid phase. When you look at the gametophyte, it is a haploid phase. Again, when you look at the gametes, these are haploid phase. So if you see, both the diploid as well as haploid cells are involved and present in a plant life cycle. So now based on these haploid and diploid cells, we will see that which type of life cycle are known as haplontic, which type of life cycles are known as diplontic and which are haplodiplontic. So let us start our discussion with haplontic life cycle. So let us look at what is haplontic life cycle. So in a haplontic life cycle, the dominant phase is gametophyte. So can you remember of any life cycles of plants which we discussed here in this lesson where the dominant phase was gametophyte? Yes, you're right. 
the bryophytes. So, in these plants, the gametophytes are a long-lived, more distinct, independent phase of the life cycle. So, let us look at the cycle, how the cycle looks like. So, here if you see, this pink region shows the gametophyte. That means the gametophyte occupies the most portion of the cycle and that is why it is the dominant phase. So this is the gametophyte which produces the gametes and then these gametes fuse together as a result of fusion. Zygote is produced and then this zygote will form the sporophyte and the sporophyte will produce the spores. So if you see only this, this zygote is the diploid phase. So the sporophyte is also somewhere here. So the sporophyte is only a short lived phase which immediately gives out spores. So here you can see that the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte and how what about the gametophyte? It is free living. The gametophyte is not dependent on anyone. But the sporophyte is not free living. It is de dependent on the gametophyte. So the best example would be the algae which falls under the thallophytes as well as some of the bryophytes. So most algae like Chlamydomonas or uh, Volvo, in all of them the uh, gametophyte is the dominant phase. So the gametophyte here is free living, independent, they have photosynthetic so they are not dependent on anybody else for their survival. But the sporophyte is dependent on the gametophyte. Okay, now let us look at the diplontic life cycle. The life cycle in which the dominant phase is sporophyte. So where do we see these diplontic life cycle? We see it in the vascular plants. That is, we see it in the gymnosperms, angiosperms. So their sporophyte is the dominant phase. So here if you see, this is the sporophyte. So most of the time, the plant is in this phase. So the plant which we actually see, that is nothing but the sporophyte. It contains spores somewhere inside the plant. This sporophytes will give spores, which spores will germinate to form the gametophyte. And then the gametophyte will give rise to the gametes which will again undergo fusion to form the zygote. So this portion where the gametophyte is formed, that is a very short lived phase. So here we can say that the sporophyte is free living, that is the sporophyte can survive on its own and is not dependent on anything. But the gametophyte is not free living in this case. So this is a diplontic life cycle, which is seen in gymnosperms and angiosperms. Now let us talk about the third type of life cycle that is haplodiplontic. So it is an intermediate between the haplontic and diplontic life cycle. So in this case, which is the dominant phase? Sometimes the sporophyte is the dominant phase. Sometimes the gametophyte is the dominant phase. So this is known as haplodiplontic life cycle. For example, it is seen in teratophytes and bryophytes. In bryophytes, the dominant phase is gametophyte, whereas in pteridophytes, the dominant phase is sporophyte. So let us look at this example. So in this case, this is haplodiplontic. This is the gametophyte, which gives the gametes. Then the gametes under perfusion, it forms a zygote. This forms the sporophyte, then the sporospite gives the spores. So this is how the general life cycle of the bryophytes and pteridophytes go on. And here if you see, if you talk about the uh, long-lived or short-lived thing, so both of them have equal probability of being long-lived or short-lived. So in case of, if I talk about the pteridophytes, so in pteridophytes, the sporophyte is free-living. The gametophyte is also free-living. So in this kind of life cycle, none of the sporophyte or the gametophyte is dependent on each other. Both are free-living. So both are photosynthetic. Both are capable of surviving on their own. Now let us take the example of pteridophytes. In pteridophytes, the sporophyte is diploid, dominant, independent, photosynthetic. 
as well as long lived but the gametophyte is short lived that is why sporophyte is the dominant phase but if you consider the bryophytes in that case the gametophyte is haploid dominant independent and photosynthetic whereas the sporophyte is short lived so that is why the gametophyte is the dominant phase in case of bryophytes so now you understand how we divide the plant life cycles into haplontic, diplontic and haplodiplontic. It depends on which phase is the dominant phase. So if it is the diploid phase, that is the sporophyte, then it is diplontic. If it is the haploid phase, that is gametophyte, then it is haplontic. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.